Have you ever heard of the saying, what goes up must come down? Well, it looks like that might just be the case for the commercial real estate market. You see, there's a massive crash coming up that's going to make 2008 look as if nothing happened. Yeah, you heard me right. A crash that's going to make jaws drop and leave people wondering what the heck just happened. Well, we've been doing our research and we just found this. You see, the market is totally overheated, with prices soaring to unrealistic levels and developers taking on too much debt. Just like a Jenga tower that's stacked too high, it's only a matter of time before everything comes tumbling down. Yes. Let's start with a recent article from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, which talked about how property valuations could plummet by as much as 40% this year. I mean, that's a huge drop worse than what we saw in the great financial crisis. And we're talking about trillions of dollars in looming debt. So what's exactly causing this? Well, higher interest rates are making it harder for investors to refinance their debt. And when you have more than 50% of the $2.9 trillion in commercial mortgages needing to be renegotiated in the next 24 months, yeah, that's a big problem. Especially when new lending rates are likely to be up by 350 to 450 basis points. But it's not just the big banks that are affected. Small and regional banks are actually the biggest source of credit to the 20 trillion commercial real estate market, holding about 80% of the sector's outstanding debt. And they're already struggling with the current unheaval within the financial sector. You see, there are concerns that the turmoil could make lending standards drastically more restrictive, making it even harder for businesses to get their financing they need to keep going. I don't know about you guys, but this all sounds pretty scary. You see, during a credit crunch, banks tighten their lending standards and make it much harder for borrowers to get loans. And that's exactly what's happening now. In fact, banks were already raising their standards before the crisis hit, according to a quarterly survey by the Fed. A growing number of banks tightened lending standards and saw reduced demand for loans in the final quarter of 2022. This means that businesses and households are going to find it much harder to get the loans they need to keep the economy moving. But the banks aren't the only problem. The commercial real estate market was already in trouble before the crisis hit. Interest rates were rising and demand for office space was dropping as more companies allowed their employees to work from home. And more commercial real estate owners are facing a huge refinancing risk. According to Morgan Stanley, more than half of the mortgage's debt in the commercial real estate market needs to be refinanced in the next two years. That is a lot of debt to refinance in a short amount of time. And it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on the market. And let's not forget about the Federal Reserve. They're already raised interest rates nine times, and they're expected to approve a 10th rate hike during their next meeting in May. This is the steepest jump in borrowing costs since the 1980s. It's going to make it even harder for businesses and households to get the loans they need. Now, that is what we're getting to know now. But when you look at the bankruptcy rates from the past few years, it becomes a bit more clear of the stage where we are standing. Let me tell you, bankruptcies are on the rise, and the numbers are quite mind-blowing. In fact, in the United States alone, there were over 387,721 cases in 2022, and the situation is only expected to worsen in the coming years. Well, that might have lessened the anxiety, right? But let me tell you, this was just a painkiller shot. The truth is the long-term effects of these bankruptcies are likely to be devastating, with significant job losses and a ripple effect on supply chains small businesses will be hit the hardest, and we all know that they are the backbone of our economy. Recent reports indicate that commercial real estate values have plummeted by as much as 30% in some areas, leaving many property owners struggling to keep up with mortgages, payments, and other expenses. And it's not just property owners who are feeling the heat. Businesses that rely on commercial real estate are also struggling to pay rent or renegotiate leases in the face of declining revenues. Now you might be wondering, why is this happening? Well, the pandemic has severely impacted the commercial real estate sector. Many companies were forced to close their doors or scale back operations, resulting in a plummeting demand for commercial real estate. This led to a huge list of vacant office buildings, retail spaces, and other commercial properties. But that was two years back. The thing is, with remote work becoming the new norm, as we said before, there has been a real decrease in demand for office space. As a result, the value of the commercial real estate has further plummeted, with an estimated 80% loss in value expected soon. But there's a lot more going on than bankruptcies. It's not just about COVID-19 or the lockdowns. There are other factors at play here that could be just as devastating. For instance, the rise of e-commerce is causing traditional brick-and-mortar retail spaces to shrink in demand. It's putting a lot of pressure on landlords who depend on rental income to survive. It's not just about the landlords, though. Banks and financial institutions that lent money to property owners are starting to feel the squeeze, too. They could be facing a wave of loan defaults and bankruptcies, which would only make things worse. The thing is, this is not just a problem for the real estate industry, it's a problem for everyone. 
As commercial real estate values continue to decline, we can expect to see rising unemployment. Businesses will be forced to lay off workers or go out of business entirely, which would lead to a spiral of economic decline. This could further exacerbate income inequality and social unrest. It's not just about money, it's about people's lives. Wealthy investors who have the resources to weather the storm may be able to snap up commercial properties at bargain prices. Meanwhile, small business owners and everyday Americans will struggle to make ends meet. This could widen the gap between the haves and have-nots even further, creating a whole new set of problems. The economic fallout from the crisis likely to be felt for years to come, with long-term implications for global economic growth. So what can we do about it? Well, some experts argue that without government intervention, the situation could jump out of control, leading to widespread bankruptcies and economic collapse. What, what form should that intervention take? It's a tricky question. Some have called for direct financial assistance to struggling businesses and property owners, while others advocate for regulatory changes that could help ease the burden on those affected. However, there are concerns that government intervention could actually make things worse. Direct financial assistance could lead to a moral hazard, encouraging businesses and property owners to take risks they might not otherwise take if they knew the government would bail them out. Regulatory changes could also lead to unintended consequences, creating new problems down the road. It's a tough spot to be in. We need to act, but we need to act carefully. One thing is for sure, though, the current situation demands action. We can't just sit back and hope for the best. We need to take action, and we need to take it now. The impact of the economic crisis is likely to be felt by all Americans. As more businesses close their doors, there's going to be fewer job opportunities available. This is going to lead to a significant decline in consumer spending. Retail sales have already declined by 8.3% since last year, and this number is expected to decline further in the coming months. As more businesses close their doors and more Americans are forced to lay off employees, there will be fewer people in the market for homes. It's likely to lead to a significant decline in home values. This global economy is also likely to be impacted by the economic fallout from the pandemic. As the United States struggles to recover from the crisis, there's going to be less demand for goods and services from other countries. It's likely to lead to a significant decline in global trade. Anyway, as we sum up, I know all of this might sound a bit scary, but you guys can use this information to help you prepare for what's to come. And if you're really feeling a bit overwhelmed by all this information, don't worry. We've got a ton of resources to help you. Just stay tuned for more updates and insights into the world of commercial real estate. We'll meet again in another episode.